One month later. We're now with Skyguide at Geneva Airport. It's from this building that Skyguide manages all air traffic over Western Switzerland and some parts of France and Italy. A few floors higher up, we meet Olivier Perrin. For Olivier and his team, the moment of truth has arrived. This shows vertical deviation, a maximum deviation of 1.3 meters, 95% of the time. That's a substantial improvement on GPS. We just couldn't achieve this degree of precision with GPS alone. As you saw, we put a number of antennas on the ground during trials to plot the aircraft's path as accurately as we could. What we actually did here was use the principle of differential GPS to calculate the aircraft's path to within a few centimeters. That's what you can see on this screen here. We subsequently calculated the precise precision of the aircraft at every point along its path. With GPS, you need a minimum of four satellites to fix the aircraft's precision. We came to realize that we tended to have between five and seven, and never fewer than five. Our geostationary satellite was visible at all times. This is an essential element of the EGNOS system, so it's good that it was. Obviously, in a valley like Science, you will have fewer satellites visible than from flat terrain. But there are always enough of these, so that shouldn't be a problem. Right now we have analyses which show that the integrity is always adequate. So the user should have full confidence in the system. Let's not forget that the GNSS EGNOS system is still only in its trial phase. But Sion Airport has high hopes of seeing it implemented. Building up its charter operations would enable the airport to reduce its deficit by a million Swiss francs a year. It would have a positive direct impact on the local economy too. Every tourist spends an average of 1,000 to 1,500 Swiss francs in the region. Sion is currently capable of accepting Boeing 737-300s, RJ-85s and RJ-100s, but these aircraft types are ageing now and are likely to disappear from the aviation scene in the not too distant future. To welcome bigger aircraft types, offering their airlines lower operating costs, GNSS card will need to be played, and I'm sorry to say that, Having looked in vain for other systems, for some time now, GNSS could be the last card that Sion Airport holds in its hand. It will be some time, however, before GNSS EGNOS is in operation in Europe. The partner states in the project will need to construct the ground stations required. The aeronautical authorities will then have to give their green light, and the airlines will have to be persuaded of the virtues of the new system as well. There is still a lot of work ahead at the certification level and in terms of developing the materials required for an EGNOS approach. That doesn't depend entirely on developments in the technical field, but the operational validation of technology should begin around 2005. We will be developing the procedures, but we also have to encourage the companies to equip and certify the aircraft accordingly. And as soon as everybody is ready, we will set the switch to green and we will be off. The ground station should be ready in 2004 and the whole EGNOS system should come into operation by 2006 to 2008. 20, 10.